And welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. Often it's fun just to pick interesting personalities in our community and get to know them a little better. Such is the case today. We are so happy to welcome Pastor Wayne Evans to our community. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Wayne, you've had an interesting life and it's taken some interesting paths and I know you're starting something kind of new now so I think we just want to get to know you a little bit better let's talk about you first of all um, your relationship with the Lord let's start there what's your story well I grew up on my dad's farm back in central Ohio mom and dad always made sure that we got to watch Billy Graham on television And when we got to a certain age, they made sure we got to Sunday school. Didn't go to the preaching service, just to Sunday school. (laughs) And it's just what we did. But as I grew older, it just was less and less important to me. So I had a friend when I was 14 kept witnessing to me. And he kept inviting me to go to church with him. And I kept turning him down. And finally, I remember one Saturday afternoon when he was bugging me and bugging me about going to church with him, I thought, maybe if I go to church with him once, I'll get him off my back. (laughs) He'll stop asking. And so I went to church with him the next morning. It happened to be a new church that was in an old Kroger store that uh, uh, this church was getting started, had a guest speaker in. And he preached on come, call, and receive. The the outline still sticks with me because that was an important day for me. And it seemed like the message was all directed at me. Of course, he and I had never met. That's just the Lord's timing. Mm -hmm. So I went forward and asked Jesus into my heart. They told me about starting to read in the Gospels and get acquainted with who Jesus was that I'm now connected with. I did that. I started uh, having devotions. Uh, I'm not sure how I knew to do that, except I I kept hearing even radio programs from Billy Graham every week. I'd listen to them, and he'd have materials he would send. And all of that, you know, from one medium or another, that became my discipleship. Wow. Do you stay in touch with that friend? I do. I had to do something a week ago for a a course I'm teaching out in Kansas, and I had to put together a a piece to introduce who I am. And he is a part of that story. His name is Randy Beckley. Mm -hmm. So I I wrote him a few days ago and and told him about that, and I put the piece on Facebook. And uh, he wrote me back last night that he was going to check that out. So often I think uh, when we feel compelled to invite someone to church— we still are mighty surprised when we see them go forward and think, what? what? What was his reaction to you being so responsive so quickly? All I remember was him smiling. He was driving the car on our way back home. And the one discussion that we had on the way home was me saying, how in the world am I going to tell my parents what I just did? <laughs> and he's he's enjoying the moment. That I don't remember him giving an answer to it, hmm. but... Uh, we went through that together. Interesting, though, that your parents believed it was important for you to hear Billy Graham's message mm-hmm. and for you to get to Sunday school, whether mm-hmm. or not they participated in worship or not. But it was important for some reason or another for their children mm-hmm. to be introduced, at least, to this. Your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think of it as there was a time, I'm 60 now. There was a time in the early 60s where a pastor led them to the Lord, and yet they were undiscipled. Mm -hmm. And that took a longer period of time for them. In the end, I'm the one that baptized my dad. Oh, how neat. Uh, You know, those kinds of things. It it was kind of an arc instead of a a moon rocket. It, It just took a while to do the discipleship, but they were embedding the right kind of values and and behaviors and things like that in in my brother and me but uh it it was it was different less defined than what my wife had because she grew 
up in the church. I think she was born in the front pew. And, <laughs> uh, every time the door, well, her family would unlock the doors. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, and I lock mean, them up again. Exactly. The, yes, so. yes. They, they saw this in you. Then certainly that continued to have some kind of a, an influence on the entire family. Did you see a ripple effect throughout the family? Your brother, for example. Yes, it was... It was always positive. There was never a negative about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was one conversation with my dad, though, somewhere along the way, where he said to me, what did you do so wrong you had to go and become a Christian for? That was his his question to me. And I'm not altogether sure how much that was a challenge to me to think about it or how he was viewing this, that I had gone further than what they were going, and that seemed odd to them. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what was going on in his heart and mind, but I remember that question. Hmm. And it just dawned on me about, Jesus had changed my heart. How could I live any differently? Yeah. Um, I, I led my cousin Greta to the Lord one time when she was out at the farm. And she became so different. And mom and dad were asking about that. What'd you do with Greta? <laughs> I just, <laughs> I told her about the Lord. Yeah, <laughs> and he does all the changing. He does, yeah. he does. And so I think over the course of time, mom and dad, uh, they could see it. They could see it. Mm-hmm. Later on when I, I felt a call to preach, uh, I told him I would, wanted to study for the ministry. My dad came up missing for three days. Really? Now, Mom tell, told me a few months ago she knew where he was, but I didn't know where he was. My goodness. For three days. When he came back home, he said, Wayne, I think you ought to go to Malone University. Back then it was Malone College. Mm-hmm. I said, Dad, why do you think I ought to go to Malone? He said, well, if this preaching thing falls apart, you can always get a teaching certificate. <laughs> <laughs> that gig doesn't work. He was very practical. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> but they could see, they could see something forming in me that uh, you know, Dad is gone now. Mom is still with us, and mm. and she's always very encouraging about that. And she writes about her studying the scriptures and her prayers for us. And uh, it, it that long arc has reached such a rich point yeah. that. Uh, we see it in each other now. So cool to see that transformation, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's real, and it's right there. Um, help me connect the dots. What what happened between, there is something different between accepting the Lord and then actually being called to ministry. What happened between point A and point B? When did you feel that call? Do you remember how that happened? Oh, I remember the call. I was going to a youth group, and the pastor of the church was telling the youth about going out and visiting some of the people in the church. Uh, A friend of mine who uh, we still keep in touch, she was in the same youth group. And I've told her, I said, I saw tears. I saw tears in his eyes when he was talking about that. Mm. And it touched me. Yeah. So that night, I was uh, reading the scriptures and and praying, and I sensed the Lord just say these words to me. Very few times have I heard the Lord speak to me, but this was one of them. Wayne, that's what I want you to do. Wow. And I wrestled with that for about three days because I wanted to do other things. Uh, I was serious about my faith and following the Lord, but... I wasn't thinking about going in the ministry. But after three days, I came back to the Lord and said, if that's what you want me to do, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the rest of my life has been a a walk of him opening doors and me walking through and sharing God's word and uh, touching people's lives. Mm -hmm. And I just count that as a great privilege because I, I wouldn't have set that out as a goal. I, I, you know, but he opened the doors, and there we are. Yeah. 
Was it no. through Malone that you found out and got involved with the Friends Church? How did you get plugged into the Friends <laughs> Church specifically? No, that was a pretty girl that I saw at the Richwood Fair. Yeah, a knockout, gorgeous, the <laughs> Regina Evans. Yeah. I We were on the Junior Fair board together, which meant that we were part of the group that organized showing sheep and cows and all those kind of things <laughs> at the fair. She would stand out. She would. And she <laughs> one day she was wearing a blue raincoat and a black floppy hat i'd gone out and gotten a, a reese cup candy bar well they uh, a double reese cup candy bar and i brought it back i caught her outside of one of the buildings and i said hey i got an extra candy bar you share it with me <laughs> and she took that and one of the best things she laughed at my jokes <laughs> that's good so i started uh, inviting her out soon after that mm-hmm. to go on a date and she kept turning me down uh. And it took a while before I realized I was inviting her out on Friday nights when she's playing in the band for the high school football games. Oh. So when I realized that there is also a Saturday in the week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and by the time I figured that out, her parents had done an FBI background check on sure. me. You know, the, the Family and Friends Bureau of Information. <laughs> yes. what, what do you know about this Evans guy? Yes. You know. And they they gave their blessing for us to start dating, and we we dated uh, through the rest of high school and and college. We got married before graduating from college, but mm-hmm. we dated for five years. Oh, so fun! So really, starting dating in high school, you married your high school sweetheart. I did. That is so. Fun. And she's still my sweetheart. Yes, indeed, <laughs> and beautiful family. Talk about your family a little bit. Oh, we've got four children. Two boys, two girls. Mm -hmm. Diane's our oldest. She and her family are in uh, the Columbus area. Uh, Our son-in-law is a policeman. She is in business. Uh, Our two grandsons are uh, 16 and uh, 11. And uh, the 16-year-old is working on his driver's license right now. Oh, man, that's the worst. Uh, They both love football, and we're just... (laughs) Any reason for us to get together, we love to yeah. run to Columbus or they run up here. Awesome. Yep. So, uh, Jason is number two. Mm-hmm. Jason was born with Down syndrome. Mm-hmm. Now, when he was born, we were under appointment or we had been elected by a, a different church than we were serving at the time. And I became really scared that people wouldn't want to deal with that. Oh, uh, I, I, I thought things were over, um, but you learned differently. I hope. Oh, very quickly, mm-hmm. very quickly. We were, we were released by the church for a weekend so we could go back home and tell our families. Mm-hmm. And in between Regina's parents and my parents, we had a drive in the middle there where the Lord met us in the car, and He started reminding us of this point and that point and the other point, about a dozen things that told us, I've been preparing you for this for your whole life. Mm. It's going to be okay. Yeah. And uh, I got a victory out of that I've never lost. Yeah. The Lord was so good. Families who have a child with Downs uh, to a person sound so grateful. Oh, what yeah. What a an addition these very awesome kids have have brought to the family that yeah. wouldn't have happened in any other way yesterday i uh, was speaking in a church mm-hmm. and i i told them uh about the value of a life yes and the value of a life is not altogether what about what they make and all of those kinds of things i pointed out about jason and one of the things I said was, God don't make no junk. That's right. And here's what Jason adds to people's lives. And this is what he adds. And this is what is he adds. This is what he adds. I said, God has a purpose for Jason's life. Mm-hmm. And we count it such a privilege to have him in our family. Right. Privilege is it. It is. Mm-hmm. And And when I was finished speaking about that, there were people that came up. And their feedback just spoke volumes about, you know, people often will think that somebody with Down syndrome is just going to be a drag on society somehow. 
And they said, we can tell he's not a drag on oh, society. My um, getting to work, uh, we do need to take a break, but uh, I'll just add, getting to work with the Pregnancy Center, uh, we know that there are so many families who sign up on adoption waiting lists specifically saying if there's a couple who their child is diagnosed with Downs and they, for one reason or another, are considering terminating that pregnancy, we want that child. We are signing up specifically for children with Downs. Put us on the list. You just see it over and over and over again. Tremendous privilege. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. We are going to continue with Wayne Evans after these words. You're listening to Our Community.